Anyone here, just by show of hands for my own sanity, anyone here currently working on or have a gaming for good product in inverted commas? What, 50%? Cool. Right, uh, so I started this gaming for good as a myth, but uh, because uh, well, it's not real. Uh, we see a lot of, I've been to a lot of charity conferences over the years, uh, and it has been, and it's, there's a conversation to be had around it, but uh, the, the concept, certainly how it's perceived in the charity sector of what gaming for good is, uh, uh, this is kind of a miss, uh, miss Noma, something like that. Uh, what did I write down that I didn't include in this already? Oh, who is Tiltify? So just so you're aware, uh, I'm Tom from Tiltify, and it's nice to see, I can, I'm sort of starting to spot a few familiar faces, which is nice. Uh, those of you who haven't heard of us, we are a fundraising platform uh, specifically designed to engage with uh, uh, digital uh, um, people, natives, digital natives, digital communities, and that sort of thing. So, um, we started in 2013 uh, when Twitch, if anyone is familiar with Twitch, was in its relative infancy. A lot of people wanted to fundraise for charity, but there wasn't any form of technology that existed that would uh, interact directly with, with Twitch. Um, so people were setting up their own PayPal funds and stuff like that, putting money into their own personal account and then sending it on to the charity afterwards. Of course, other things, GoFundMe, Just giving esque things existed, but they didn't offer the technology that this digital community wanted. Uh, and so we've sort of grown from there, all about engagement, all about trying to uh, maximize donations. And uh, I've my co one of my colleagues came in from the States a few weeks ago and brought a whole bunch of flyers. If you'd like a flyer, take a flyer, because I don't want to take them back with me, because they're heavy. Uh, right, uh, I don't expect you to read this. This is mostly prompts for myself. But uh, a question, and I, what I sort of want to get the, 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 the process and thinking about this space is uh, when we think about gaming, uh, a lot of the marketing, and you'll have seen some charities perhaps in the room will have done this type of marketing where it's like, game for 24 hours for charity, uh, or something of that ilk, targeted at the gamer, woo, uh, and, and that sort of language. Um, and something I sort of wanted to <coughs> pitch to the room is if you were hosting a running event, or perhaps you were friends with Mo Farah and Bill Bailey, who would you sponsor more to take part in a London Marathon? Would you sponsor the person who is the radical runner, or the person, well actually Bill Bailey's a bad example because he's quite fit and healthy now, but the point that I was sort of getting at is someone who maybe wouldn't have done this before and it might be a bit more of a challenge for. So when we're going out with the marketing in this space and saying, hi guys, be a Whoa. Be a pro gamer, do, the, do the, the gaming and this sort of stuff. Actually, is this the right ask? Is this the right way of going around it? Um, Gary Barlow. This is where, this is, I, a few of, if anyone's spoken to me in the, like, the last five days, you'll have heard me talk about Gary Barlow because I think he's a really interesting example uh, of, of a fundraiser. Uh, just uh, sort of going through some pictures. I spent some time on Google and didn't really stop. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Gary Barlow, uh, he, he's done lots of stuff for charity. He's got an OBE for his charity work. Uh, oh, no, we'll leave it at that. Uh, he's got an OBE for his charity work. He's done lots and lots of stuff for charity. Famously, he has released singles for charity. He has, uh, in fact, I've got them here. Some of his, uh, he sold some of his handwritten lyrics, uh, 1,200 pounds. Ooh, that's good. Uh, he sang a song with Ronan Keating, Back for Good. Uh, the, the whole night raised over half a million. Decent, this is good. Did a show at the Royal Albert Hall, two million pounds. This is good, this is big money from this one guy who's really engaging his community and his fan base and the fandom and this sort of stuff. And he released a single with a whole bunch of other people uh, of Everybody Hurts, I think it was like 2010 or something like that. Apparently half a million record sales. I don't know what that translates to in funds. Couldn't find that on the internet, possibly nothing. But the point is, is that he's done a lot of stuff for charity. But the one thing that really raised a lot of money was when he decided to walk up a mountain. Now the interesting thing about this is, if you approach a singer or a songwriter and say, hi, will you do a fundraiser for us, do a song, 
sure, it's my bread and butter, i.e. you approach a gamer and say, hi, would you do a game for us? They'll be like, yeah, sure, I'll do a game. But what we're doing here is taking someone outside of their comfort zone, doing something totally obscure with them, and raising a shit ton more money. And that's the important thing. And this is something that I'm going to hammer home the point of, which is that when we look at gaming, we're often missing the trick or missing the point in the charity sector. So what does the market look like? People like stats, don't they? Uh, in the last 12 months, roughly about $500 million, 450 million pounds, if you want it, has been raised. Uh, in the sort of the digital streaming place. There are approximately 50 million uh, active creators across all platforms that have decent followings, i.e. it's a big market. Uh, the creator economy is worth, or last year was worth approximately 104 billion. So it's big, i.e. bigger than the games market. Uh, and 32% of all UK children want to be content creators as a career. Now that doesn't need to be alarming, it's interesting. It means who are their idols, who are they looking up to? They're not looking up to bankers, yay, uh, but they are looking up to people who inspire them, who, who they are influenced by. The influencers, if you will. Uh, so I want you to look at the creator economy as a whole and not gaming, and I cannot stress that enough. When we look at gaming, we will often, and I'll talk with charities, uh, where did this come from? Grin, if anyone needs to like reference it later. Uh, or maybe the slides will go out, I don't know. Uh, there is Twitch, uh, and under the live streaming aspect. Over here is YouTube, under the photo video. But all across here, these are all of the different tools that content creators are using day in, day out to make their product to, to engage with. Now, some of these you may never have heard of, others you will have. Some ones that I like that I know a lot of charity people will be familiar with, something like Canva. Super simple to use, often free for charities, and a lot of content creators will use that to design their own you know, brand and, and slides and all the sort of things that they need for their video content. Um, but I've never seen anyone do a you know, Canva for charity, even though everyone's using it day in, day out, and all this sort of stuff. So it's, it's worth looking at this and understanding the space. Trends. Gaming. Gaming. Uh, gamers have become a much smaller segment of the space. Now, we, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that, yes, Gaming for Good has been successful in the past, inverted commas, but the space we're looking at is incredibly fast rowing. So what we're looking at here is uh, a space that is evolving rapidly in the fundraising angle. Uh, average ages, more stats for you, uh, of, of fundraisers in this space, 24%, 18 to 24, 47%, 24 to 34, years old, and 20% over 35 to 44, i.e. this is we've got a young demographic that we're working with here, uh, as I like to think of it. Other things, uh, how do we inspire people to raise money for us? We're seeing swag on the down. Oh no, people don't want swag anymore. What we are seeing more success with uh, from charities engaging with content creators is rewards, as in uh, seeing their impact in action, uh, or in this instance, and I know a couple of charities have done this sort of thing, um, trophies, something epic, something fantastic that they can say, wow, I'm a good person. I've done something impressive. I'm flying through this way too fast. I hope you've got questions. Uh, so trends. This is something that I sort of wanted to boil back to. I started researching the space and before I started working at Tiltify in 2018, and it very much was, the conversation was about gaming for good. Gamers, game, play the games. Uh, you will maybe be familiar with some of the, the big names that were famous at the time. Uh, War Child, Macmillan, Special Effect. This sort of like, got to stop stepping backwards. Uh, special Effect, the, you know, big, big charities that do great in the space. The key thing that they do really well in this space, Warchild, very, very good at their corporate relationships, building relationships with the companies. Uh, you've got a special effect, fantastic at community engagement, really talking to their community, bringing them on board, sending that message across. It's community fundraising 101, really. You can just remove the internet and it's just old school, boring fundraising. Uh, and then you can uh, look at Macmillan, which again, they did a very sort of marketing heavy campaign and really tried to sort of just push the numbers out there. But again, 2018, gamers, that was the language. Then it's sort of like, oh, hang on, you know, gamers, they're not that, what is, a, what is a gamer? What is, what is this gamer? They are, well, 
in a non in a traditional charity sense, they're gamblers. This is we're looking at lotteries and that sort of stuff. So it doesn't quite fit in in the charity charity playbook language. Um, but also, it's got negative connotations. Uh, I met with the guys at Yuki a few months ago, and we uh, we had a little talk there. I know a few people came to it, but Yuki, which is the UK interactive entertainment something or other. I uh, can't remember what it stands for, don't tell them I said that. But they look after gaming in the UK. That's their, like, their shtick. And they said that they have, they, they're actively not using the word gaming in any of their press releases, any of their documentation to the government, in anything like that, because it's got such negative connotations. It's got Call of Duty, I'm going to kill everyone with a gun type mentality, which isn't healthy for the conversation to move forward. So when you've got the governing body saying don't call it gaming suddenly you're like okay maybe i won't call it gaming maybe i'll call it something else players we'll look at the players we'll look at like because then it's it's also like it's fun it's, i'm playing i'm having a good time and the problem with players as it were and i don't mean that in any sort of sexual sense <laughs> is uh they they're doing just that they're playing then they don't have any necessary following so if uh let's say i manage to convince everyone in the room to fundraise for my charity by playing games wonderful you'll all get out your nintendo switches or ataris depending on your age and uh you will play pong or mario kart uh while you're doing that that's fantastic why the hell is anyone donating to you you're not doing anything you're just playing a game there's no reason to donate in fact if you wanted to ask someone to donate to you, you would probably have to stop playing the game and say, hello, I'm playing a game. Would you donate to me, please? And that's the key thing here. So we now move away from the players and move into live streaming. Now, live streaming has been a really interesting space, and this is where it comes to life. Now, live streaming started, uh, well, pre-2010, there was a thing called Justin TV, but I'm not going to go into the whole history of the internet for you. But at this point, uh, pandemic-wise, it Shot up. We know that. Uh, and if you look at the sort of like the graphs and the trends, I, can I draw one on here? Maybe. Uh, it sort of goes like, whoa, and then it dips off a bit, but it's still significantly higher than it was in 2019. So it brought a huge influx of new people on, dropped away again, but it's still very much, much higher than it was in 2019. And the live streaming, the conversation that we were having with content, don't read that word yet, content creators, is to say, uh, I'm hosting my own telethon. This is what you've got. So you've got someone like Jack Septicai, who we work with regularly. He's, a, he's a, a case in point, a classic example. If you haven't heard of him, Google him later, watch his videos. It's fabulous. Um, up until this point, he was doing a fundraiser maybe every three months, give or take, typically raising between $100,000, $200,000, which is good. Uh, he's an Irish guy. I think he lives in Bryson now. Uh, fundraising for various different charities that, that mean something to him or to his community, perhaps pick people in his following followship, not a word, uh, would contact him and say, oh, hi, would you fundraise for, my, for this cause? It means a lot to me. I fundraise for that. What happened at this point when the pandemic hit is a sort of a seismic shift, which he said, ah, it's bad, I need to do more. What more can I do? How do I raise more money? And this is where things sort of changed and I hope this is the sort of like, oh, moment. He activated his community. Rather than doing a live stream for five hours and saying, hi, my name's Jack Septicai and I'm doing a fundraiser. Don't film that, record it or share it to him because it's offensive. Uh, but uh, please donate. And all he would do on his videos typically is just thank them. He'd just say, oh, thank you so much for the donation. Oh, another one, another one. This is great, this is great. Really, you know, it's fun. It's fun to donate. Instead, what he said is he put out an ask two months before and said, guys, I need to raise as much money as possible. I don't want you to donate to me. I want you to fundraise with me. And that went from about 200,000 to 4 million. It's a big shift. And so now he only does these once a year because it's huge and it's very, very time expensive and he'll be doing another one again at the end of this year. Don't know the charity yet. Uh, but last year he did one for Feeding America, an Irish guy living in Brighton, fundraising, no, Central World Kitchen, World Central Kitchen, sorry. Um, but, uh, you know, feeding people who don't have food, charity. Uh, and it, it, I think it had about 10 million. 
and that was because he really, really engaged with his community and with the charity. Ah, charity, the magical word. So uh, with that, because there was enough time to plan and prep, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm just gonna finish this buzzwords. So content creators, then it became content creators, so we're looking at the content creators, it's not just live. So some of the biggest fundraisers around this time were all on Twitch. Suddenly there's a bit of a shift and they're all on YouTube now, what's happened? Well, some of the bigger names moved over to do their stuff on YouTube, so that had an impact. You've got the likes of Dr. Lupo and Jacksepticeye as well, to name a few, uh, moved their, their live content on different platforms, but also there's a uh, power in the pre-recorded. And what we're seeing in this content creator space now is not just the, the cool nerds who have their baseball caps on and say hello fellow kids, but we've also got podcasters. We've got makeup, we've got baking, we've got anything. We're, we're now entering the anything space. And all this is, is coming from here down to here is the early adopters of technology. It's quite simple. If we were to go up one more than this, it would be pornography. So all we're doing is we're moving down on who get and military before that. We'd, we'd be moving our way down the, the technology graph, and now we're in, now it's Joe Public has access to it. Anyone can be a creator. You know, the, 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 we've got, at this point here in 2018, TikTok didn't exist. Now it's the most popular search engine in the world overtaking Google. That's insane, right? So we've got to think about these sort of things when we're thinking about who these people are and who we're targeting. Uh, how am I doing for time? Ages, oh, okay, fine. Uh, then now what we're looking at is the creator economy as a whole, and that is where I want you guys all to be thinking about much more holistically. We're not thinking about, uh, you know, what type of Fortnite game should we set people a challenge of, but more, what are people doing? What are, they, what are they up to? Who are they following? Maybe they've got 100 followers, maybe they've got 100 million followers. It doesn't really matter, but they're, they're creating content and they're in the creator economy. Right, I'm gonna come back to the Jacksepticeye thing now. So, here are some of the biggest fundraisers last year. Don't know why I didn't include Jingle Jam on there. That is one as well. Uh, but, we've got uh, some interesting ones here. A lot of these people are, would you might classify themselves as gamers. This Team C's one was Mr. Beast, who is the world's largest YouTuber. He's overtaken PewDiePie. I hope all of these words mean something to everyone in the room, otherwise you're, you're, you're already two steps behind. Uh, we've got this guy here who is a fan of Mr. Beast and decided that he would start with a penny and uh, try and get as much money as he could to, go, to get to meet Mr. Beast eventually. Bit of a fundraising activation. Relay FM, ever heard of it? No, maybe, oh, nice. <laughs> it's a podcast group. It's a collection of podcasts, half a million dollars raised in a week just from podcasting, right? This is, I see podcasting as like the, phew. this guy, big gamer, uh, I've suddenly forgotten his name. Anyone? Ludwig. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he, just, he just sat in a box for 50 hours. Brilliant, for charity. He is a gamer, he does gaming. Gaming is his shtick. Uh, but when he goes to raise money for charity, he sits in a box for 50 hours. Uh, Jack Septicai, the example that I gave here. So what he did here is he did a, an afternoon comic relief style event. Uh, it's just to use terms that we might be familiar with. Uh, he had special guests along, Jack Black, Valkyrie, Markiplier, and Bella Porch, uh, to name but a few. Uh, he also received a half a million dollar donation from Coca-Cola. How did that come about? We should probably talk about that, uh, but also uh, received a 3.5 million donation uh, from one of the supporters of the charity who just thought this was a good thing to get involved in. Interesting, we should probably talk about that too, but we'll come back to it. Uh, this guy here, uh, I'm actually gonna talk about him now. So, this is Sea Dog, Sea Dog, Sea Dog. Next week, so you can watch it, hasn't happened yet, next week he is cycling across Japan. Cool. Uh, his thing, Big into anime. Loves Japanese culture, as you can see here. He does voiceover work for anime and all this sort of stuff. Like, cool, okay, I don't really know anything about that. But last year he did it and he's going to do it again. He cycled across Japan. Just like, uh, this is why I mentioned Gary Barlow earlier. Uh, taking him outside of his comfort zone and doing something totally, you know, adjacent to, i.e. with Gary Barlow, he did it with a whole bunch of other musicians and things, but again, taking that side of the comfort zone here, goes out with a bunch of friends, eight days, 750 kilometers, cycling across Japan, live streams, a large portion of it, obviously it's not 5G the whole way, so can't do that and everything. He's got uh, a poll going on that people can donate to. Is Connor joyful? 
Donate to find out. This is, so people are voting and donating. He's got his totalizer at the top here. You can see the chat chatting along in the bottom corner. This is, if you want to watch all eight hours of this particular day, you can. It's on YouTube. I just took a screenshot. Uh, and he raised 320,000 uh, on his own. He's just got over, I think he's got 1.2 million subscribers on YouTube. So that's like a decent number, but it is by no means in like the upper echelons of YouTube. Oh, I finished. Okay, hang on, let me go back. Unless you want me to stop. No, you don't. Uh, thank miss. Oh, so I'll just briefly tell you about the um, Coca-Cola donation and the $3.5 million donation, because they're interesting, I think. Uh, the uh, Coca-Cola donation came about, Jack said, I like Coke. Right, a, a cola. And uh, that's something, he drinks a lot of it, and he's always been like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if they'd sponsor me? That would be really cool. Anyway, the charity spoke to Coca-Cola CSR department, because they'd already got an existing relationship with the, uh, the CSR department, and they said, well, this is great, we don't have that much budget, but we'll put 100 grand behind it, because, you know, solidarity, CSR, whatever. He wasn't happy with that, didn't think it was enough which is fair. So uh, Wingled and Wangled our way around and got through to the marketing department and showed the value of the reach of this. The half a million dollars that ended up being donated to charity is less than what they would have had to have paid to get him to talk for 15 minutes about Coca-Cola. So donating to charity for a business in a marketing sense was cheaper than it was to actually try and target this guy. They, they, like the, the marketing team were like, oh, beside themselves once the connection had come through, but it would never have got to them if it hadn't been for some sort of working because the CSR team at the time wouldn't have really known who he is. Like they're just like, oh, cool, a YouTuber, whatever. Um, because of, often it gets sort of sidelined into this like second, second other thing. The 3.5 million is a really interesting one and it's something that it's worth thinking about. They've got some major donors, funnily enough. Uh, and one of the major donors had kind of already agreed to make a donation around Christmas, but it hadn't been confirmed, and they were umming and ahhing. The charity used this as an opportunity to leverage it and saying, look, we've got this amazing event coming up with Jack Septikai. It's really, really exciting. Uh, would you like to be involved? And they were just like, oh, yes, let's make... And they wanted to be anonymous, which is totally fine, but they wanted to make... They wanted to put an impact into something that was coming up, and that's really cool as well. That's quite exciting. And these are the sort of opportunities when we look at... When we look at gaming for good, uh, what you're really looking at is an entire universe, a parallel universe to the one you're currently operating in that is far more global than where you're currently operating. Um, and, you know, the same people exist in this sphere. Uh... That'll do. I think I've said enough. I've waffled, haven't I? I've waffled. Uh, right, any questions? Forward slash statements. Have I gone, to, do you want me to talk more? I can. It's perfect. Oh, good, excellent. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>